In this video, I'm going to show you quite an interesting modification that I've come up with to permanently disable the dedicated graphics card on a 2011 15 inch or 17 inch MacBook Pro. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, the AMD Radeon HD 6000 series graphics cards uh, that these machines have are known to be defective. Now, this is not Apple's fault that they're defective, it is actually a manufacturing defect on AMD's part uh, that causes these chips to fail prematurely. And it is very, very rare that you will actually find one of these systems that has a working GPU. Now, a good solution to this would be that uh, you just install a revised chipset. However, because AMD manufactured this chipset, they have not actually created a revised chipset uh, that is compatible with these boards, so therefore any new GPU that you were to put on one of these systems would just fail again. So the only good solution on these systems because of AMD is to disable the dedicated graphics card entirely. Now there is actually a software method to do this, however it requires setting an NVRAM variable, which of course will get reset every time you reset the system's PRAM, and it also requires making a modification to OS X uh, by deleting all of the AMD graphics texts. If you do leave them in place, um, the NVRAM variable will just be reset every time you reboot the system, which of course is quite unintuitive. Um, so I've actually come up with, well, it's actually been done before, but I, there's very, very little info about this mod online, um, and I basically had to come up with it myself, uh, even though uh, the only info I've had is just a few pictures, and of course that's very little info to have on this mod. Um, so basically I figured out most of it myself based on the schematic, um, so I'll go ahead and uh, show you the schematic here and uh, show you what I've done. So. Um, on the schematic here, you can see that I've gotten the page for the GMUX chip um, highlighted here, or the pages uh, visible on the display. Um, so what the GMUX chip does is it takes the LVDS lines from both the dedicated graphics card and the integrated graphics card, and based on what the software says, tells which set of LVDS lines to go out to the LCD. So it basically just takes a bunch of lines and routes them to the screen and switches between two different sets of lines based on which GPU you want to use. So if we go ahead and take a look um, at some of the uh, rails connecting to this chip here, you can see right here, or sorry, you can see right here that these are all the LVDS IG or integrated graphics uh, data lines right here. And if we take a look at this side of the chip, you can see that all the LVDS EG, or dedicated graphics, I'm not sure what the E stands for, I'm guessing enhanced graphics maybe, uh, but anyway, these are the LVDS rails coming from the dedicated graphics card. And uh, up here are the LVDS rails going out to the LCD display. So what I've done to bypass this entire circuit is first off I've desoldered and removed uh, U9600, the uh, GMUX chip here, and I have hardwired the LVDS lines from the integrated graphics over to the LVDS output for the display. Now, of course, doing this requires a crap ton of bodge wires, um, and that's exactly what I've done. So if we go ahead and take a look at the point on the board where the GMUX chip is supposed to be, you can see that I have soldered a ton of wires in its place. So basically, the LVDS lines for the integrated graphics, or no, these are the output lines for the display, um, are on this side of the, ch of the uh, chip here, and the integrated graphics LVDS lines are on the bottom. So I can go ahead and actually show you that in uh, board view here. So if we take a look at these little resistors and all on the bottom here, you can see that this point on this resistor is LVDS IG8 data P0, uh, A data N0, um, you can see A data P1, A data N1, and so on and so forth. So you can see IG B data P2 there, N2, 
N1 and P1. So basically what I had to do was route each of these points to their respective output lines on the LVDS connector side. So you can see we've got similar rails here. You can see LVDS connector A data N1, which of course would connect to wherever A data N1 uh, is on this board. I can't remember exactly where that is. Ah, there it is. LVDS IG A data N1 would of course connect up here to a data in one of the LVDS connector side. Uh, so now that you can see uh, sort of the basic premise of the mod here, you can see there are quite a few of them. There's actually, I think, about 10 lines uh, plus two clock lines that you have to connect. Um, so I will actually make a diagram, a wiring diagram, uh, for both the 15-inch and 17-inch machine. Uh, I put a link to that in the video description. So if you want to, uh, you can follow this process and attempt to do this modification yourself. Um, now I will say that this isn't for the faint of heart. This is quite some tedious soldering and is pretty much mandatory to be used uh, with a microscope. You can see I have uh, quite a big microscope here that I use for soldering uh, small things like this. You can see I've got an LED light ring around the lens um, which helps illuminate the board. And I've also got a camera on top of this microscope, which I will actually switch to in just a minute uh, to show you this wiring in close detail. So um, yeah, I can show you pretty close with my camera here, but um, yeah, it is sort of still hard to see. Go ahead and focus that in. You can see I've soldered wires to each side of those resistors, which of course uh, correspond to those LVDS lines. Um, and of course I've soldered them into the proper sections or the proper uh, points on the LVDS connector side. Now along with those, along with all the data lines here, you can also see that I've had to do a couple more bodge wires up here, um, and these are all for uh, the LVDS enable lines. So this one down here is actually for um, a muxing line for the LVDS, uh, the LVDS connector clock lines, and that basically switches it uh, between the integrated graphics and dedicated graphics based on a certain resistor being pulled high. And uh, that's exactly what I've done with this wire here. I've just got it connected up to this capacitor, which is a uh, is on the PP3V3SO rail. And that, of course, just pulls up the uh, integrated graphics uh, DDC muxing line uh, to keep the LCD uh, set to use the integrated graphics. Um, and then there's, of course, another couple lines here uh, used for enabling the LCD power and the backlight enable lines and so on and so forth because those were all uh, initially controlled by the GMUX chip. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my microscope camera now and uh, show you the whole thing in a little bit more detail. So I'll resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I'm now uh, recording using my microscope camera. Now the quality of this camera isn't really the best However, it is still uh, decent enough to show you uh, what this wiring looks like. So if we go ahead and take a look here, you can see uh, some of the wires on the uh, L or the integrated graphics output side here. Um, so you can see uh, this resistor right here is actually uh, has the clock signals on both sides. And I have those routed around here, up here, to these two resistors right here. And then I've also got it looped up around to these two right here. Now the reason I've done this is because the LVDS connector has two sets of clock lines, whereas the output from the integrated graphics only has one set of clock lines. So you just kind of jump them around here um, and it works just fine. So you can see um, up here we've got some and these are all just the normal LVDS data lines. And of course I've got all that connected uh, down here. So yeah, as you can see, it is quite a bodge job, and it doesn't look the nicest, but hey, it works, and uh, it doesn't look too bad, and I've soldered these wires pretty well, so they're not going anywhere. So right here is uh, one of the main wires here for, or this is actually the pull-down resistor for the DC, DDC MUX for enabling the integrated graphics. So like I said before, I've just got this uh, connected all the way up here, to this capacitor right here near the backlight I see, uh, which is just on the PP3V3SO rail. And of course all that does 
is uh, keep the rail pulled high all the time, uh, keeping, of course, the integrated graphics enabled all the time. So our next thing here is one of the pins needed to turn the backlight on. This is actually uh, the PWM signal. Now this normally is used for controlling the backlight brightness. However, since that is actually controlled by the GMUX chip, I've just got this hardwired uh, to the uh, IG backlight enable rail uh, on one of these BGA pins for the GMUX chip. And unfortunately what that means is that the backlight brightness cannot be changed. It's actually set at a fixed brightness. I believe it's a little bit below full brightness, um, but that's just a small price to pay for having a fully working system uh, using only the integrated graphics. So this last line here is for the panel power enable for the LCD panel. Um, that is also hardwired uh, to here, which is another panel enable rail, and that's also enabled or connected up here which is actually the backlight enable rail. So basically all that does is just gets all the LCD power lines enabled and the backlight power line enabled and all that stuff, gets the backlight IC going, and of course gets a backlight signal out to the LCD. So that is basically a, a brief overview of this entire wiring setup here. Um, like I said, it is quite complicated and of course is not for the faint of heart to actually try, uh, but it does work and I'm gonna go ahead and get this board hooked up into its chassis and display and show you that now. So I'll go ahead and resume the video. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten the board installed into its chassis. Um, you can, of course, see the mod right there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom case on this machine, turn it on, and show you that it works. And close it up here, flip it over, and go ahead and power on the system. And as you can see, the display comes on just fine. Go ahead and hold down the option key here. And I guess I was too late with that, but uh, go ahead and reboot it again. And as you can see, it does actually fade out the backlight. I actually wired it um, in such a way that even when you turn the system off with the power button, it will actually fade the backlight out, which it actually does not do on a stock 2011 machine. So I found that kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and hold down the option key here. And uh, now it should pull up my SSD. So go ahead and select it here. And now the system will boot into Mojave, which is what I have installed on this machine, uh, on this SSD here. So should take a second to boot up since it's an SSD. And there we go. So let me go ahead and log in. Now the screen actually looks bluish on camera, but that's just the camera. It's actually not like that. There you go. As you can see, if I focus in up there, it is not, um, not washed out anymore. Uh, so if I go ahead to about this Mac, you can see that it detects everything just fine. You can see Intel HD graphics, um, the 2.2 gigahertz i7, and the memory I have installed. However, as you can see here, it detects it as a 13 inch late 2011 MacBook Pro. Now the whole reason uh, it detects that is because I actually ended up having to flash the system ROM to a MacBook Pro 8.1 or 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro system ROM. Now, uh, with the original 15-inch uh, ROM, for some reason, uh, graphics acceleration would not work um, in OS X. I actually tried uh, in both Mojave and Mountain Lion, and uh, graphics acceleration just would not work um, in either OS. So I went ahead and just for the heck of it, decided to try flashing 13-inch uh, firmware onto the system, and uh, sure enough, that fixed the issue. So uh, as you can see here, we've now got full graphics acceleration. Um, you can see that it only detects the Intel HD graphics 3000 card. Um, of course, no AMD graphics card detected. Um, I'll go ahead and close out of this. So you can see um, that the animations are nice and smooth. Go into Launchpad here, the uh, folder animation is smooth as well. And uh, you're really not losing much uh, with not having the dedicated graphics. Yes, your uh, backlight you cannot change your uh, backlight brightness, but uh, 
Um, another thing that doesn't work, I forgot to mention, is the uh, external display port on the side of the system. I think I could get that working, but it, requir it would require an entire extra set of wires, and uh, even then I'm not sure uh, that the uh, integrated graphics actually has any output lines for um, an external display. But I might be wrong on that. I'll have to check the schematic some more. Uh, but I'm not really too concerned about that as, you know, not many people actually use um, the external display output anyway. So uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, it is running just fine with that modification. Of course, everything you're seeing on this screen is coming through those wires because, of course, uh, that's how the LVDS connection is routed. Uh, through those bodge wires um, out of the integrated graphics into the display and of course on the screen um, so yeah that is this modification so uh, with that I'll go ahead and shut the system down oh one thing I should mention is sleep mode works um, the display will come back on after sleep mode which is actually a known problem with this modification apparently uh, but it worked fine for me um, so go ahead and shut the system down and uh, yeah that has been a very interesting modification to permanently disable the dedicated graphics card on a 2011 15 inch or 17 inch Apple MacBook Pro. So, hope you enjoyed this video.